Hello, and welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. Uh, we are going to be doing a very special program today. This is on the brink of World War III, and this is the second part of our program with my very special guests, my very famous and favorite foreign policy analyst, Michael Santo. Thank you. And welcome to our show. Uh, again, I want to read a small introduction, which I think would be interesting to part of this show. And it's from former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. And this was her take in uh, March of 2014. Former Secretary Hillary Clinton compared Vladimir Putin's military intervention in the Ukraine to Adolf Hitler's European aggression ahead of World War II. The former Secretary of State, she made the mention that it's, she is recommending that we perhaps can learn from this tactic that has been used before. She also said that in, in describing Putin, when he, when he looks at Ukraine, he sees a place that he believes it by very nature is part of Mother, Na of Mother Russia. And Hitler's justification in his invasion of the neighboring countries, he said, were efforts to protect ethnic Germans. Hitler annexed neighboring Austria, Czechoslovakia, and uh, Sudanland in 1938, one year before invading Poland, which sparked World War II as part of the fatherland, the motherland, whatever he calls uh, uh, Germany. And he, she mentioned that was the same thing that Putin thinks of Russia as, as the motherland. And so she saw a comparison between the two leaders, between Hitler and Putin. What do you think about that, Michael? Well, there's a lot of important differences. I think that after World War I, I was telling you at lunch, World War I was very devastating to Europe. And no sane leader would actually try to do a repeat of that. And Hitler did do a repeat of it. Now there were innovations, more uh, higher uh, use of tanks, and the Germans modernized tank warfare, or, or basically created it for World War II, but still a massive war. So Putin, even if he uses tactical nukes, by the way, will think in terms of strikes, clashes, the Russian forces could take half of Estonia. We can't really. Well, first of all, they didn't, have, war. they didn't have nukes in those well, days. Well, yeah, did they? yeah. But, right. but, but what I'm trying that's, to say is, even they even both think of. But no, Putin doesn't say, think in terms of total war because I'm saying that even no, without even, nukes, but, but it was he very talks different. About Russia as the motherland. He, he's type aggressive, thing. but he's very aggressive. He's very hostile. He's very belligerent. But there's differences. He is very clever. He is very calculating. Hitler was not calculating. Hitler was insane. Putin's very cold-blooded. Um, so, but, but he's not insane. No, he's not insane. But the problem is he has enormous leverage, which people just don't understand. But he has to explain it to them, having the world's largest nuclear arsenal. My point is World War I and World War II, even without nuclear weapons, with, with the exception of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, were extraordinarily uh, devastating. And those type of massive wars are very hard to control. That's why the old Soviet Union preparing to launch potentially having the preparations for a massive invasion of million, two million forces maybe and tens of thousands of tanks really scared us. Not only did they badly outgun us, but just by us responding with tactical nukes, it could blow up completely out of control and then lead to a total nuclear exchange. Now, Wait, now let me ask you, Michael. The, we, there, there's a, a word that's been used and it's been getting thrown around. It's called hybrid warfare. And we talked about it earlier at the Bluegrass uh, about um, the uh, little bit met earlier for lunch. And uh, we talked about disguised warfare. Well, no, I warfare. told you. Okay, so I we, told we you. We talked about disguised warfare. Okay, so I warfare. told you that the best way to understand hybrid warfare is disguised warfare. So that was, was the way. Do you think that Hitler and do you feel that that um, Putin both use that type of No, system. no, no. So, so deception, because, so deception. Because is, they were both, both of them were deception. Because no. They were, well, just a minute. They were trying to tell their people, the people, the Russians, the Germans, that other people were trying to take away their, their land, and this is part of their land, in disguising their warfare. No, 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 no. It's so a very explain different, the different matter. So explain the difference, then. Now, there are actual 
you know, there are actual lies. Did he actually disagree on certain things? No, so that's well, good. So, so clearly Hitler lied often. But deception is a major part of Russian military doctrine. And hybrid warfare, I don't want to go first into the technical details of all the different things they do. It could be hacking, it could be sabotage, it could be terrorism. But even in the Soviet Union, particularly with their security services and their clandestine services like KGB and GRU, which has a special forces unit, it's called the Spletsnets, which by the way, somebody destroyed a power plant in the United States with commando tactics a few years ago. Power company was able to switch power or else it would have uh, generated bad. Where was that? In it was in California. I was feeding into Silicon Valley. The power company was able to switch over, but we are not able to produce that much of that equipment to fix it. So had somebody done that 20 times, so they attacked we our, would have had. Our, that was our grid, right? Yeah, they attacked that was the grid. grid. Nothing, People weren't no, really worried about If they did it, well, well, but by the way, that fits within hybrid warfare because no uniforms, but it was assault rifles, commando. And what was interesting about this attack, and this ended up in the newspapers after it was referred to in a unclassified uh, congressional committee meeting, if somebody had done that 20 times over, we would have, or 30, something like that, we would have had a major, major continental power failure that would be very hard to get out of because we don't produce that much equipment for these plants because it, it rarely breaks. And not only that, Plants require power failures. We don't have a that's required a, that's, power. That's really so scary. The, the plants People coming in and destroying our grid. Yeah, yeah. So no, very, but here's the thing. That's, that's, thing. A, that's so a different that type even, of warfare. That, that's a type of hybrid terrorism. This is asymmetrical. And the Russians are very clever at it. But it was interesting. So they did it 20 times. You know, the plans to produce these things don't produce very many in the best of circumstances. With no power in North America, then you have other problems. We don't have enough generators. So James Woolsey always warned that an EMP, a massive EMP with a nuclear blast. EMP and a, is what? Electromagnetic pulse. But the one that he always warned about was a massive one triggered by a specialized nuclear explosion in the stratosphere over the center of the United States, which were completely fry electric grid and that goes so this is part of hybrid warfare yes so the thing that's interesting about the tech that we never heard that word before that is something new. it is new it it's is a new, new word. But, but the interesting we need thing, a new dictionary but, but, but the interesting fair. thing is so the, the reason that james wolsey was worrying and warning he was clinton's former cia director is he claimed that the north koreans and iranians could supposedly manage this attack but and they would do it from a ship but if we could tell who would do it we, there's a very chance that we nuke the heck out of them because it could cause us to starve but hybrid warfare involves unmarked people shooting up a power plant just as they did right outside of Silicon Valley and like just imagine try to produce these rare parts with no power in the continent we have we don't have enough power generators to do it see old wars where you knew who your enemy was the person wore a different uniform than you did you know, it was always about the uniform. You would always know who your when enemy was. When the Russians was. went into first into Crimea and then eastern Ukraine, Putin kept saying, what Russian troops? What Russian troops? They didn't have uniforms. Right, at first. And then even they went in with tanks, and those were rebels. The rebels were, were using some of the most advanced Russian tanks. And then suddenly, every once in a while, there'd even be air-launched so missiles. So there wasn't such a thing where there weren't rebels. They were actually Russian it was soldiers. A mix. It was a mix. But mm -hmm. the rebels were getting their orders and their backing from regular Russian forces and also GRU. And this is one of the ways that Putin is far more clever than Hitler. Hitler thought in massive invasions. Putin wants to gain leverage. He wants to also because the United States overall. So you're saying he goes into one country and then not goes even into sometimes, not even because he didn't really take over Syria. He didn't even he he barely even yeah. used, he barely even used his air force against so Ukraine. What, so he did go into Syria. And barely. Yeah. So five thousand troops. Okay, and he did recently pull out, but he does no, have no, a uh, pull, no. out, pull out, pull out, pull out. It's a residual group that's uh, it, still there, right? No, it's, it's, it's more than the residual. For example, the... Because he, no, no, so. he said, and just recently, he said, um, in pullout, Moscow aims to avoid a quagmire, which is a situation that's, you know, I don't think that's problems. actually as quelled, actually, that, that yeah. you said the quagmire. Yeah. So here, but what, it, what is no, it? No, what, no. Is, what, what did he gain? Do you feel that he there did was his no job? Right. No, there was no real Russian pullout. So the S-400 anti-aircraft missiles. But he said he pulled well, out. Well, he says a lot of things. Okay. He's a liar. He's a KGB guy. He, okay. His, uh, deception is his part of his game. It's a big part of his game. 
he now has the S-400 anti-aircraft system in Syria. It is a huge, huge threat to Turkey. It's a huge, huge threat to all of NATO in the Eastern So you're saying they're still there? Oh, they're very much there. And the there, there is no such thing as a pullout. Well, there is a pullout of planes. What do you pull out, five people? <laughs> well, he pulled up planes that, as he said, can go back there in hours, but the S-400 right. is there. It is the most formidable an, uh, Russian air defense system. The U.S. military is very scared of it. The French... What to, is it again? It's an anti-aircraft missile system. The, Why don't we have it? Well, we have our own things, which are at least as good, but that doesn't counteract theirs. The U.S. military is very, very afraid of the S-400. Once the Russians had an excuse to put the S-400 in Syria, the French wouldn't even fly their planes into Syria. What the, the French started to do was launch air-launched cruise missiles from hundreds of miles away in the Mediterranean because they didn't want to fly their planes into Syria and get shot down by the S-400. But he wants to keep Assad in power. No, I don't think he even cares about that. He wants to keep his bases there. What he's done in Syria, Kaliningrad, and Crimea... Well, Assad allows him to do that. As, it doesn't matter. You can kill Assad tomorrow. But he keeps him there. Assad's a little excuse, and the next day he has a different excuse. Um, Assad's a convenient excuse. Um, so you're, the reason he's in Syria is because it's strategically, yes. it's good for him. Well, it's a little bit of a tripwire. This is why... So that's it, but it's that's a little hybrid. Bit, by that's the way, yeah, but, yeah, right there. but it's a little bit of a tripwire. One of the reasons I really didn't expect Russia to move forces there is even with S-400, with push comes to shove, we, or even the Turks probably, could take him out. But you see, if we struck at those Russia, I mean, pretty easily, actually, because it, it's so it, it's far enough from Russia, those ground forces, that he it, it's like an overextension. He can't really adequately defend them, at least with conventional forces. But the point is, if we had to strike at those forces in a thousand Russian soldiers died in Syria, he is his pick of targets in Europe, or even in the continental United States. But I doubt in the American homeland he would ever strike in a very deadly way, because if you really, really upset us, he knows that we could fire strategic nukes and destroy him, even though we know that that could be suicide. But we so, don't seem to do anything. As, as uh, Putin, he goes to the Ukraine, he's going into... So Syria is going, going, Syria. He's okay, going so into... I need he's to, going into... He's possibly going in maybe into Latvia. You know, we seem to just don't... Oh, no, Putin's, no, so, okay, so... When, is, <laughs> when do we... When do we uh, do anything about it. No, no, it. But, but, but it's a little bit of a tripwire. Why doesn't President, no, no, because he why wants, because President he wants Obama us. do anything no, no, about it? No, no, because he wants us to. So if we kill a thousand Russian soldiers in Syria, he has his choice of targets in Europe. He can use um, cruise missiles with either conventional warheads or nuclear warheads. Well, we don't have to kill. We could put sanctions. Well, if, we are doing but, sanctions. Yeah, but somehow the sanctions are not working. Well, the sanctions kind of backfire because yeah. Why he blames that? it on us and s uses it to show his people that we're the enemy, and then he refocuses his economy towards the military. You know, so it's amazing that what he did in Syria only involved 5,000 um, Russian troops. Not only that, you know, one of the devastating things about the S-400 anti-aircraft system, it means that a couple $100,000 Russian missiles could destroy a $20 million U.S. fighter. So everything he's doing is very cheap. But one of the things very noteworthy is in Syria, he's using cheap World War II bombs, which cost $500 each, mm -hmm. which are far more powerful than the bombs Israel and the United States use, usually, because we're not trying to kill everyone. So he has this very devastating force that he's doing on the cheap, and yet he starts firing cruise missiles from ships in the Caspian Sea nearly 1,000 miles away. Now, why would he do that? It's much more expensive to fire cruise missiles from 1,000 miles away. Why is he doing it? I said this, and then a month later he said the same thing. He said, notice that they can carry nuclear warheads. And he says that he hopes that he doesn't have to use nuclear weapons against ISIS. Now, that's a joke. ISIS is spread out. Nuclear weapons do not help with guerrillas. People often say, and this is really stupid, the, the Soviets never used nukes in Afghanistan, so they'll never use nukes in a confrontation with NATO. That's really stupid. How, no, no, but that's how stupid. does he see that he can get rid of ISIS? No, no, no. no. He doesn't care about ISIS. So he that. doesn't care. You're he might be behind ISIS. They're quite possibly behind ISIS during the Cold War. You think they're funding? The Russians look, look, are, could the, the Carl, Russians are absolutely, funding ISIS? Absolutely, absolutely. Why do you say that? Well, look, Carl's the Jackal, for example, had lived in East Germany.